In a previous video, I showed how I use common household PVC piping to make a mask for this axe. In this video, we're going to do the same thing for this knife. If you're interested, keep watching. Okay, before we get started on the design of our knife sheath, let's go over a few of the tools and materials you're going to need for this project. First off, obviously, you're going to need a knife. Whatever knife it is that you want to make a sheath for. And I'll talk more about this knife in a minute when we get to the design of the sheath. Obviously, next you're going to need some PVC. So I have two different weights PVC that I'll be using today. This one is in-house vacuum tubing that I picked up at Home Depot. It has a very narrow, quite flexible diameter. Uh, this is the two inch version and you can buy it, I think, in eight foot lengths. And I've had a number of projects from these tubes and it works very well. It is not heavy duty by any means. So therefore you need to back it up with something else. So what I'm using in here is, this is sewer pipe PVC also purchased at Home Depot. So I have a length of that cut from a pipe I bought just for these per, uh, projects. And uh, we'll be using that for strengthening and re reinforcing the sheath as you'll see in a minute. What else will you need? Well, you're going to have to have some way of flattening the PVC out. First, you're going to need to cut it so that you can make a flat sheath out of it. I'll be using a saw, probably this saw. I have a couple saws I could use, but I'll just have a saw here. Then you'll need to be able to flatten the sheath out. I'll be using a heat gun. You could use your oven at home or a small toaster oven. Uh, you do have to be very careful. Keep the temperature low enough so it just becomes pliable without actually burning the material. And one other thing I would recommend is do this in a ventilated area. PVC gases, I don't know how toxic they are, but they smell. So, <laughs> you know, they're likely they have some toxicity, toxicity to them as well. So do this in a ventilated area. What else will you need for your safety? leather gloves. And I do mean leather and not vinyl gloves because you're going to have to ma manipulate with your hands the hot PVC piping and you can burn yourself quite easily and you can melt synthetic gloves. So I'll be using a pair of leather work gloves. You'll need a drill. You uh, could use a drill press. I have a drill press I could use for this project, but I just want to use a hand drill because this is not heavy duty drilling. And of course to go with some the drill press or your drill is some small drills, bits. Um, pop rivet. I have some different size pop rivets. I'll talk more about the size. The size is also dependent on what type of PVC you're using. So I have some uh, my pop rivet tool, some two sizes of pop rivets, and some of the backup, the ones that look like little washers just to reinforce the pop rivets when they go through something to mark with so that you can mark an outline of your design on the PVC material. Straight edge and a ruler is helpful for making measurements as well as, well, marking straight lines, of course. I have two optional things so you don't have to have. Depends on the design of your sheath. This is an old heavy duty nylon belt. It's about an inch and a half wide. This is going to form the loop from my belt itself because I'm going to make this into a dangler style. And I have an inch and a half harness ring that I'll be using for the dangler ring. So those are optional, but in my case, I'm going to include them in the design. Okay, that's all the tools and materials you need. Now let's talk about sheath design. Okay, before I start showing you a few different sheath designs that I could make for this knife, one of the things I just want to mention is the reason why we're doing this at all. Of course, if you have access to, to Kydex or someone who can make Kydex and you don't mind paying out the money for a Kydex sheath, Kydex is definitely the superior material to use, if, or other than leather, of course. But if you're looking for something that's synthetic and very tough, Kydex is just un, unbeatable. It's a great thing to have. But there's a cost associated with either having somebody make you a Kydex sheath or working with Kydex. One, the material itself. Two, a Kydex press. Now, I've made a Kydex press and I may or may not use it. I don't think I will be using it this project because I want to show that you don't have to have a Kydex press for using or for working with PVC. And this knife, well, this knife I didn't pay very much money for. This, in fact, I paid... Uh, well, it was on sale for, I think it was $7.99 Canadian dollars at Canadian Tire. And I picked it up for one reason, very specifically, I wanted to see if I could break it. I know that sounds a little uh, in, inappropriate, but, uh, you know, people had been saying that these are tough knives. And I thought, well, you know, the design isn't bad. It's survival knife looking design. 
but uh, I bought this and I've used this a number of times. I use it quite often around the house when I'm splitting and batoning wood down and I have beaten on this quite hard. Now I haven't heavily abused it. I haven't tried to bend it at a 45 degree angle or anything like that, but I have wailed on it quite regularly to baton wood with and uh, it stood up <laughs> extremely well, extremely well. The only thing I may say is the scales are uh, screwed on with some bolts and they have like a, uh, it's a hard plastic with a rubber overmold and I can feel the tiniest bit of movement in them when I'm batoning. Not just holding it, I can't feel it now, but when I'm batoning I can feel just a tiny bit of movement. Uh, you know what, that, I don't, that's not surprising really. I could and I may yet take them off, put some epoxy on, screw them back down and see if that doesn't hurt the issue. But the other reason I wanted to work with PVC is or at least to create an alternative sheath is the one that came with it. This is terrible. And you know, look at it. It's it's all flexible. The body of it is flexible. It has no retention whatsoever. Look at the tiny little piece of Velcro that comes with it to hold the knife in the sheath. Now, if I just put this inside of my backpack, maybe not an issue, but if I want to wear it on my belt, that's a big issue. So <laughs> the sheath garbage. We'll get rid of that. Okay, so a couple of different style designs that I could make for this knife. Number one is what's known as a taco sh style sheath. So this is a PVC sheath that I made for a small Mora as a neck knife. I did include a little tiny belt clip on the back and that's something you can work with as well. This is one of the earlier ones that I made with this same PVC material that we're going to use today. And I set this up for neck knife carry and it works quite well. It snaps in nicely, has good retention, hasn't failed me. And you can see I have painted it black with a flat, uh, uh, what, what, what you might call it, paint that's good for plastics, I guess. All right, here's another style. This one is called pancake style, which involves just two pieces of material, Kydex if you're using that, or PVC in this case, pancaked one on top of the other to make a sheath. And then of course, pop riveted around the outside. So this is also a neck knife setup I have for a small Kershaw knife. It makes a nice little neck knife and it also works just fine. It holds it very securely. It's not coming out and I have uh, good faith in how that's working. So, we're going to make in this design a taco or fold over style sheath and I have another one that I've already made and used extensively and this is the foundation or the basis for the design we're going to have today. So the one that the knife that I have in this is a heavily modified buck punk. I had taken the handles off, made some homemade micarta, my very first attempt at micarta, uh, re-sculpted them and uh, you know what? Uh, well of course there was a coating on the blade that I took off as well. This is quite an amazing knife. People, I think, underrate the Buck Punk 5160 spring steel. Really, really, really tough. And I, I just love, like the design of this knife a lot. But the sheath left a lot to be desired. Good quality. It was just a molly compatible type sheath and I wanted something that looked a little bit more traditional on my belt. So I went with a PVC design, first off, to see if it worked. And I liked it so much that it's the only thing I carry the knife in right now. So you can see there are two primary components to this, and this is what we'll be replicating for this knife today. The main body of the sheath is made from that thinner PVC, the one that comes from the in-house vacuum cleaning system. And then we have a piece that wraps around it and forms the belt loop, or up to this point, it forms the point where I put the dangler on it. And it is made from that heavier PVC, the stuff that I have or from, made from sewer pipe. And you can see there are pop rivets, in this case just four pop rivets going down the back and two pop rivets holding uh, the fold over on the back side of this. There's a, no, I mentioned why now, the different size pop rivets. So the pop rivets for this portion are this thinner type, I forget what the size they are but I will quote it in a mo moment, or the shorter ones, but I needed thicker ones to reach through because now we have not only the layers of the thin PVC but the two layers of the heavy PVC so you need a longer pop rivet to go through those. I did not find it necessary to put the little washers on the back of it for retention. I'm not sure I will with this project but it is an option if you want to make sure it's not going to pull out on you you could use the little washers. Now I also did decide I wanted a dangler style for this. Now I used an old piece of leather belt, a couple of cheap Chicago screws 
And this is actually a circular carabiner that I use to put on. We're going to be foregoing the carabiner and the leather belt today and using the harness ring and nylon belt for this design. Okay, what's next? All right, next step, I'm only going to take a minute to explain this, then I'm going to do it off camera. The next step would be to cut a piece of this PVC and what I'll do is measure how long I want it against, well let's just do that right now as we're talking. So um, I'm going to, you only need the PVC really to come up just a little bit past the hilt of the knife because uh, it doesn't need to extend all the way up obviously and I want it to go down past a little bit past the tip so I'll probably put a mark right about here I'll cut that off I'm giving myself a little bit extra to work with because it's easier to cut off later again like working with other materials it's easier to cut off excess than it is to add it back on so I'll cut it right about here and then I'll have to split this down the middle. You know, this is thin enough. I could use a pair of uh, cutting shears to do that with rather than a saw. However, the PVC sewer pipe, that's heavy. So I am gonna have to use a saw for that. I'll put this in my workmate probably and just cut it down like that. I'll also be opening these up and letting them go flat under the heat of my heat gun. So I haven't mentioned this already, but I think it should be obvious, but it's worth mentioning again. Safety always comes first. I will be using gloves to prevent burns to my hands. I'll also be using a surface uh, that I know won't be uh, damaged by the heat gun because they, they can produce quite a bit of heat and I'll have a ventilated space in which to work. So once those pieces are opened and flattened out, I'll bring you back. Okay, here are the two pieces of PVC that have been heated, heated and flattened out. Still quite stiff, all right, and there's the heavier one of the two. So we're going to put the heavy one aside because now we're going to work with the thinner one to form the body of the sheath. And what I've done, just to make it a little easier, is cut a piece of paper uh, pretty close to exactly the same size as the piece of PVC is just to give you an idea of how what the next step will be. So there are a few ways you could do this. Uh, from my experience, it, the easiest way is just to heat it, fold it, and get the generalized shape of the knife. So although I have folded this in half, what I wanted to show you was if you, uh, what you're looking to do, what you're looking to accomplish at this point is to create that fold over on top of the knife. But here's the thing, you need enough room around the edge side to, to uh, put the rivets in, or the pop rivets in, of course. You, I'm recommending you need an inch of space, and I have just a little bit more of an inch. As you can see from the center point, the spine of my blade, I probably have a little bit more than a quarter of an inch, and that'll allow for the fold over to work. And then to the outside edge, I have about an inch and a quarter or so. The other thing, and that includes at the tip, so you want to come all the way around about an inch. The other thing you have to take into consideration is how high you want the PVC to come up over the hilt. So the whole concept of the PVC sheath is that it will grab on to some area of the hilt, and that's where the locking will take place. It doesn't grab the blade, it grabs the hilty area. So a hilt that has some type of a guard like this that... Uh, uh, it can lock onto is much better than one such as a Puko knife where it really doesn't have anything to grab onto. Then you're looking for friction. Here it's actually going to grab and form a little bit around the finger guard there. So I have not a lot of free space to work with, but enough. So you don't have to have it come up very high over top of the guard. Uh, you know, and it's like working with other materials. You can cut away extra, you can't add it back on. So if you, if you come a little high at this point, that's no problem because you can always make it a little shorter. One of the nice things about working with PVC, it's easy to reheat and reshape constantly to get to just exactly what you want. In fact, that is both a benefit and a bit of a, a thing, thing you have to work around. And what I mean by that is, when you're working with Kydex, traditionally most people use a Kydex press. And I'm going to show you two homemade Kydex presses that I have here, made with foam blocks. And, eh, you know, I've got some thoughts on it. That's a small one. 
and a huge one that I've made with foam blocks. And what you would do, of course, is heat your material up, fold it over the blade, put it inside the Kydex press, put some big clamps on the presses to keep them shut, and wait. And you have to wait quite a long time because those same foam blocks that help mold the Kydex around the blade also insulate it, so it takes quite a while for the Kydex to cool off so that it doesn't lose shape when you open it up. Same thing can be said for the PVC. It tends to lose its shape if you open it up too soon. Now here's the only, here's the other thing. That's only going to give you the initial form. So I, I, you know, it works, but the problem is when I go to reheat to get some shaping, especially around the guard, the rest of the thing tends to lose shape a little bit. It's not quite as stable as Kydex is. So it really doesn't offer you a whole lot of benefit to have a huge or a, a, you know go through the effort to make it a Kydex press, especially if you're only going to use it the once. You can do a very good job just with your gloved hands, but I do mean gloved hands. Insulated gloves, in fact, would be better than, than just thin gloves. Because what I'm going to do, as you'll see, is I'll fold it over, I'll hold it in place until it's fairly firm, and then I'll let it cool off and then, then we'll go to the next step of shaping it around the blade. So that's what I'll do now is I'll go to the floor, I'll heat this piece of PVC up, I'll fold it over, we'll get it in that shape, and then I'll explain what the next step is. All right, it's still just a tiny bit warm to the touch, but it is easily manageable. And you can see that it has grabbed onto the blade. Now, I don't have any retention on it yet because I haven't formed around the guard and the finger guard up here at the top to get that retention. But I do have the blade in the PVC fairly well. Now a few things. One, in full disclosure, I did this twice and the reason I did is that uh, the first time I folded over and held it in shape, the blade shifted a little bit in this direction and it, the spine wasn't as back as far on in the fold as it could be, so easy enough, just reheated it and moved the spine to the back so that the spine was touching the, the fold and the PVC and then I've got a much better shape on it. Now, a few things I want to mention. This does not look like what it would if it came out of a Kydex press in Kydex. It doesn't have that clear definition around the edge of the knife that you might be used to seeing with Kydex. And it's not two-sided like you might get with a Kydex press. Uh, yeah, that's true. And I don't, I'm okay with that because, as I mentioned uh, in the last segment, when I start working around the top here to get the molded shape around the top of the guard, it sometimes tends to lose some of its integrity anyway. So to work so hard to get a really defined shape right now and then lose it later, it's just not worth the extra effort. The other thing that you'll notice is if you watch other people working with Kydex, they wrap their blades and masking tape. And I've done that in the past. And the reason you do that, I suppose for a couple of reasons, just to protect the edge of the blade against scratching if there's any material inside of the Kydex that you know might scratch at a nicely polished blade. But more importantly, it, it's to give you a little little bit of room. And what I mean is, when you press Kydex down very tight to the blade, it will get so close that it will start to pinch on the blade itself. If you wrap masking tape or something that you can remove later, then that gives you a little extra thickness to the blade so that when it's removed, there'll be just a little bit of play inside of the Kydex. And that's the reason. And I suppose it protects you from a super sharp edge. And uh, that's always a good idea. So I could have done that for my protection, but it's more done to give you that extra thickness to the blade that'll give you the ability to slide the blade in and out of the Kydex. I don't find that's necessary when working with PVC. So what I've done at this point is I've given myself a rough outline of what the sheath is going to look like. Uh, the finer details will be added in later. Now, what I need to do is to cut off what I don't want left on the sheath. And this may look a bit arbitrary, but this comes from my experience as well. I can feel the edge of the blade through the plastic right here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to run a parallel line along the PVC 
about one inch from the blade and that one inch is going to give me room to put my pop rivets in and I always recommend you back in from the outside edge about a half an inch because the uh, the cap of the pop rivet will be a, you know take it out to almost out to the edge so one half inch uh, in will be the where the pop rivets in but if you start with a one inch buffer around the outside and then place your pop rivets as we go you got to know at the end of this you're going to be doing some sanding and I probably didn't mention that but you will want to do some sanding later on to finish up the edges and make it all clean and, and look nice so having a little bit of extra on the outside doesn't hurt because you can sand that away so what am I going to do now I am going to mark about one inch and oh, just before I do that, I suppose one other way I could have done that is while I had the piece of paper and when I put the knife inside and folded it over, I could have done it then. I could have marked on the paper then I could have cut that off and uh, then used that as a template, placed it right on top of the PVC and cut that that arc onto the PVC even before I folded it. You know, it's what are the, what's the old expression? Six of one, half a dozen of another. You do it now, do it later. It turns out to be about the same thing. I can probably do a little bit better than that. Okay. So the trick now is to cut off the excess without the knife in it, of course, to put the knife aside. Cut off the excess, hacksaw, uh, whatever saw you're using. If it's this thin stuff, I can get away using those shears that I did to split it down the center. So that's what I'll do. And when we're pretty close to what we want, I'll bring you back and show you the next step. Okay, here we are. I have the PVC. You can notice that I have flattened it out and I have made it into the shape and I've actually rounded off the corner as well. I actually went one step further than I said I would do at the end of the last clip, which is I used my sanding uh, sandpaper to just give it a bit more of a finished edge. I'm going to be doing that again when the, when the sheath is all assembled, but I just uh, thought it would be easier to work with and maybe show you so you can get a better representation of where we are at this point. I'll sh even show you how I go about sanding. Uh, sanding is messy business. There's sa sawdust that goes everywhere, so do it somewhere that's easy for you to clean up with a vacuum cleaner or a broom or something. All right, so what I want to do now is talk about how to decide where to place the pop rivets and about retention. So I brought the original one back in to uh, focus for this so that you can get some comparisons. It does not take a lot of rivets to hold this together. In fact, this lighter plastic, it's not counting on the rivets so much. That's just to keep it, I guess, integrity so the shape doesn't open up too much. So the rivets I'm going to be using for this are a 5 30 seconds by one quarter inch aluminum rivet and yes I know this is wider than a quarter inch but you'll see why I chose a little longer rivet uh, when I get to the riveting stage in a minute and then for when I use the reinforcing area I have a 5 30 seconds by 5 8 inch aluminum rivet and that is more than wide enough to go across the extra thick area but there's a reason why they're longer than the material is already thick and I'll show you that as I mentioned when I get to it. Okay, where do I want to put the rivets? So what I did with this sheath and is what I'm going to copy over onto the new one is I just placed the rivets every two inches. So I just decided where the first one was going to go and measured two inches around. So I'm going to do that now. And then I'll talk a little bit about retention. So I think I'll put the first rivet right about here and I'm coming in a half inch from the edge of the sheath. So the next one's going to go about here. Again, a half inch in from the edge of the sheath. Next one right about here. And the next one right about here. Preciseness is not an absolute critical factor. 
And when there's this, it's not like Kydex where you may decide you want to use a tech lock or something to attach it to and they have to be specifically distance apart. This is just for holding the thing together. All right, so I have four points where I'll drill out in a minute for, am I, has this been going? Yes, it has. All right, so I have four points already drawn or marked on where I'm going to be drilling and use, putting the pop rivets in. But let's just talk about retention for a second. So when you're working with PVC or Kydex for that matter, retention is a matter of two factors. The stiffness of the material itself, so and that's usually determined by the thickness of it. So this material is quite thin. I'm not going to be able, oh yes, I guess I can. You can see how thin it is and how flexible it is. That doesn't provide a whole lot of tension against withdrawing the knife by itself. You also have to get some tension by how close to the end you want to put your last rivet. And I'll show you what I mean. So I'm going to withdraw the knife and you'll see it's got a little bit of a split right here. Hopefully you'll be able to see this on camera. And as I withdraw the knife, you can see how the material moves apart and inserting it again. And so it flexes open and closed as the guard, the hilt, or the finger guard goes in past the, the PVC. So this is just enough tension to hold this knife. If I wanted to increase the tension, I could do one of two things. Well, I can't put a, use a thicker material, but what I can do to this sheath if I wanted to increase the tension is put another pop rivet in closer up. So that's what you want to decide. How close do I want to put the last pop rivet to the very top in order to keep some tension on. What we could do, and I may do this, I'm not sure yet if I will, is once I get the sheath formed for this knife, and I have it inserted, and I have it somewhat formed around here, I could take a pair of vice grips and just work my way up the sheath here and decide this is where the last planned rivet is going right now, but maybe I want to add another rivet. And I'll know that by trying the knife in and out of the sheath to see if there's enough tension. I can put a piece of or a pair of vice grips right here and try the knife and move it up until I feel there's just enough or too much tension then back it off a little bit. So that's just kind of a, an experiment, experimental thing. You, you can try to get exactly the right tension. So I could, in fact, with this sheath, add one more pop rivet right about here somewhere if I wanted a little bit more tension. But in truth, I don't think I need it with this one. It's working out just fine. Okay, so what I'll do now is drill out those four holes. We're not going to do anything more with this portion at that point because for the next step, we're going to have to cut into the big one to form the, re the uh, strengthening piece. Okay, I think I may have gotten ahead of myself just a little bit in that last segment. I didn't actually drill all four holes. I only drilled the first two, one here and one here, with my 5 30 seconds drill, just to make sure that when I put the pop rivets in, they will fit in nice and tight, and we'll get to the stage of pop riving in a minute from now. But what I wanted to do is get to the stage where we're going to make the support bracket that goes around the, the, uh, the sheath itself. So just this is the piece we're going to be using, but first off, let's just go back to the design of the sheath that I already have made, because this is the design that we're copying, or at least basing the, the new one on. And I'm going to save a little bit of time here so that the video is just a little bit shorter because I don't think I need to be at all that detailed for you to pick this up. But what I did is off camera is I took a piece of paper and I played around with the paper until I got to the point where I was happy with the way this was going to fit onto the knife. Something, well, all right, let's match it, match it up so it looks just the way we want it to when we're finished. So. I have a piece of paper that is about six inches long for me. Now you can see that it is overlapping the edges of the sheath. And there's a couple of reasons for that. One, it, again, it's always better to have more material than you need. Cut it off afterwards. But as well, you can see right now, everything is flat. When I get the sheath formed to the knife itself, it's going to start to gain some thickness this way. And that's going to shrink the material back away from the edge. Plus, because this heavy grade uh, PVC, the sewer pipe PVC, is uh, much thicker, it's going to take up space as it rounds this corner. This is where you want it a little bit loose. It doesn't have to be tight against the plastic. It does here, but not here for this to work. So that's why I have a little bit of excess material to play with here. And what I have here is the loop that will be bent over 
And where is that harness ring? Here's the harness ring that I'll be using. So at some point this material will be bent over and that harness ring will be pop riveted on right about here so that then I can put the, uh, the make it a dangler. So what I want to show you is make sure that these, the edges of your heavy grade PVC do extend out past the edge of the sheath itself so that when it pulls back a little bit because of the fattening of the sheath you won't be too short away from the edge. Once we have that formed and ready to go on then we can drill the last two holes that will put those pop rivets in. So what I'll do off camera at this point is take this piece of PVC that I've been working with, so make sure I get you in camera, trace that on to the PVC and I'll cut it out because that's going to take a bit of a time with a saw because of the thickness of this PVC and then I'll bring you back and we'll do the forming of the, the uh, piece around the sheath itself. Alright, so I cut out the PVC, the heavy grade sewer pipe PVC, into the shape I had very similar to the piece of paper that I was using. This is a good time now to do most of your finished sanding. I say not, uh, not necessarily all of it, but most of your finished sanding. Before you attach it to the body of the sheaf, you want to get as smooth an edge as possible because it's a lot harder once it's attached. It also helps if you didn't do a perfect job, and I didn't, sawing down the, all the lines that I had drawn, then you can bring them into alignment a lot better. So what I have here is, and I was very fortunate to find this, is a piece of, actually I don't think it's marble, I'm not quite sure, I think, I think it's granite, a black granite that uh, was cut for some reason, but what it provides me is a glass smooth level surface and I have a piece of heavy grit sandpaper that I've laid on top of it and I can work the edges until I'm happy with them in terms of straightness and flatness and then I can of course use the sandpaper to go around the edges to round everything off. Get rid of all the little uh, curlies and things that are still attached to it so that you won't have to work at it afterwards. So this does take some time to do so I'm going to do this off camera, get it as smooth as I can reasonably get it. Again it doesn't have to be perfect before we go on to the next step. Um, by the way, this is messy. This is quite really messy. So do it, as I mentioned, somewhere that's easy to clean up with a vacuum cleaner or a broom. Okay, once I've got this to a point where I feel I'm ready to attach it to the sheaf, then we'll go on to the next step. Okay, to keep the video moving, I did a few things off screen that I'll show you what I did, and I'm sure you'll be able to follow along and copy what I did if you want to do this for yourself. So the first thing I did is I took our piece of PVC, the heavy gauge one, and I folded it over with the heat gun. I just Really, the only thing I needed to heat up was the center portion here, so I got the fold even. I then came back and I put the sheath inside of it to see where I could line it up. And uh, what I did then, of course, is I, I had drilled two holes in the folded over PVC, so they came out both sides. Hopefully you'll be able to see the two holes there. But in doing that, or in order to do that, I measured the two holes at two inch centers and then lined it up so that they're nice and evenly spaced. I then inserted the PVC main body of the sheath into it, lined it up, got it to where I want it to be, held the whole thing together like this, and then drilled those two holes in as well. Now, in truth, I don't know that this is going to turn out as well as my first project done. It'll certainly be functional. I think what you'll find is if you get to this point and you're saying, I don't know if I like the look of this, this is where the heat gun, if that's what you're using, gets to be very handy and gets to be your friend because you can continue to manipulate this and let it cool and manipulate it and let it cool until you get it in the shape you want at this point. So this is where I'm at. Now the one other thing, I'll have to take this apart in order to show you the rivets or the pump rivets are getting in the way. The other thing I did is I gave an offset to what's going to become the first part of our dangler. So there's an offset there. Otherwise, when you go to form the opening to the, to the sheath, you, you won't be able to get it because, uh, in all the way because that'll be in the way. So there's an offset created there. Again, that'll be formed a little bit more closely later. So I skipped showing you this part where I put the two pop rivets in here, but I'll show you now where I'm going to put the two next pop rivets in. And I'm going to go in through the front of the sheath. I'll just insert them into, into place. I'm 
All right, so they're in place now, and you can see there's going to be some work to do to fix this up to make it look nice at the end of it. And I'm going to close those two off, those two pop rivets. Then there's a little bit of a secret that I'm going to show you at this point, right, right after that. So I don't know if this is necessarily the correct way to do pop rivets, but I like to rotate it around because the little ball that's form in the back of the pop rivet right here. I just like to see if I can get it to come make a nice even mushrooming as I go around. So I loosen, get it to come back a little further until it appears to be back as probably as far as it's going to get. And then I'll give it its final squeeze. Oh, I think come back one more. And there, all right. There we go. So there. Now, Keep one of these little nail studs from, from your project, and I'll show you why in a minute. Let's get the other one done. Yeah, that's pretty much far back. Maybe one more. There we go. All right. Okay, so I'm now pop riveted on the reinforcing piece that also becomes my belt loop, the, the lower part of the dangler, is onto the main body of the sheath. So we're moving quite far along in the project now. Now, what you'll notice is that you have nice looking pop rivets on the front, but you've got the mushrooms on the back. And what I'm going to do is actually inside of each of those mushrooms, there's a little ball that was on the end of the stud that creates the mushroom. I'm going to tap it out using the nail or the left nail so you'll probably have to do it over something that has a gap i'm going to use a, a, a vise that and just leave it open enough and just take a hammer and tap that little ball out what i'll do then is turn it over and very gently just flatten the the mushroom stud out so that it flattens and widens out and grabs the material and looks a little bit better so when i've gotten to that point i'll come back we'll go to the next step Okay, I've done a couple of things off camera. I have the pop rivets all in. I have the little mushroom ball pushed out and I have peened over the mushroom so that it acts like a, uh, well, clamps it, the material in a little bit better in the back. Uh, this ends, results in a little bit of a rough area here. You could take a Dremel tool or something to smooth that off. I'll likely do a little bit of finish work after everything else is done just to smooth those over a little bit so that they don't catch and have any sharp edges on them. So my next step is twofold. I am going to do the final shaping of the body of the sheath so that the knife is secured in it with some retention around the top, which I'll explain in a second. And then I'm going to do some forming of this portion of the, the dangler loop. And this is more or less what it will look like when it's finished. But uh, there's a little bit of playing around with it just to get the right length. And the, that's, the, again, I'm, as I mentioned, some of the nice things about working with this PVC. If you don't like it the first time you heat it and bend it, reheat it, rebend it. It works out quite well. Now, let's talk a little bit about retention and getting the knife out of the sheath. So I'm going to remove the knife from the other sheath. So there's two goals. I'm going to try to catch both of them on camera. One is to get a pinch around the guard of the knife at this point right here. So you can see with this knife, there's a pinch point right here, and that's kind of grabbing on to this portion of the guard. At the same time, though, I folded it open a little bit just to allow for an ease of getting the knife in and out so it doesn't catch on that. The other thing I did is I pushed forward on the front to give me a push off for my thumb so that I have somewhere to push to get the release going, start the release from the sheath, pushing it off. One of the things I haven't mentioned so far is you don't want the knife so far in the sheath that you can't get your hand on the grip. If your sheath came all the way up to here, then you wouldn't have anything to get a hold of when you go to pull it out. So it's just a, it's a balance between having just enough to go around whatever area of the knife that you're using for the pinch point and deep enough so that it doesn't fall out. 
So I'm going to be looking to try to come just above the guard. This actually should work out quite well. There seems to be two areas right here where the knife can pinch over a little bit to get some retention on it. So those are the two things I'm going to do with the heat gun. I'll try to capture both of them on camera. There may be some finish work I'll do off camera and then we'll come back. Okay, project complete. Well, except for the painting, of course. So let me show you what I did off camera. So I don't mind telling you it took a little bit of back and forth, heating, cooling, forming, or heating, forming, cooling, reheating, to get it to where I was happy with the retention. And I'm going to share with you a trick that might make that easier for you. But now you can see I have a thumb push off here. I have it pinched back here, and I'll show you with the knife in the sheath, of course, yet a little bit flared on either side to allow the hilt to pass inside. The other thing I did off camera was finish the dangler portion of it. So I used two more pop rivets on the inside there. Hopefully you'll be able to see that. And I used washers on the inside. Now you're not going to be able to see the washers, but those are the little washers that you use with pop rivets just to display some more of the, the pull on it. Now, honestly, <laughs> there's not much pull on. This is thick PVC pipe, so it was probably a bit of overkill to do that. But make sure you put the ring, the harness ring in before you finish that last uh, pop riveting here. And then I did the same thing with that piece of heavy duty nylon belt. Now here you're going to be able to see the the washers. I did flatten the washers off a little bit. Uh, you know, it looks a little rough right now, I'll admit that, but that's what a little bit of sandpaper does, and this aluminum does sand very easily. But otherwise, I have a very functional dangler sheath right now. So here's the little bit of a trick. When you're using a heat gun, and you know, I, I did say you could use an oven for this, and you can, or a toaster oven or something. Um, I'm not sure about a hairdryer, to be quite honest. I haven't tried a hairdryer, but maybe one of the high wattage hairdryers would do the trick. But a heat gun is without doubt the easiest way to do this. Opening, holding it over an open flame, yeah, you could try it. I, you know, I caution you not to scorch your material, of course. But uh, anyway, when using a heat gun, if I'm trying to do some bending back here on the dangler area, because that's thicker, I have to have the heat gun concentrated on it longer. The heat then transfers through that plastic and then deforms my sheath. So, and works both ways. In fact, if I'm trying to work on the sheath, the opening of the mouth of the sheath, I don't want the heat to transfer back here and lose that integrity as well. So this is a silicone, a trivet, placemat, whatever you want to call it, that you put a hot pot on. And I was able to take this and just slide it between as a shield so I could work here without allowing the heat to come through or flip it over and work on the other side as well without allowing the heat to come through. So, how does it work? That rattling, of course, is the dangler. You know, that's plenty of tension for me. It does it come out just nicely. Okay, I'm not going to pretend that this is as good as Kydex. As Kydex. It is not. Uh, the ones that I have made have held up, but they weren't exposed to heat. I think Kydex takes a little higher heat than PVC to uh, shape, shape and form, which also means that if this were to get really hot in the sun, uh, maybe, you know, I don't know. I haven't had that happen, but it could happen. But the nice thing again is when you get home, reheat it, reshape it. And that's the that's the best thing. Okay, would you say that was an improvement over this flexible, cheap, insecure nylon sheath? 
you know, it wasn't an expansive project. It isn't a beautiful project by any means, but it's highly functional, and that's all I was looking for. I just noticed that Canadian Tire has these knives on sale again. Not as good a deal as I bought this one for, but uh, they're originally $30 Canadian. Right now, I think it's $12 Canadian that they're on sale for. So if any of my Canadian friends are watching and they want to grab one of these knives, some people debate whether or not these are strong enough to be a dependable knife. I can't say what it will be in the long term, but I can tell you that I have beaten on this. Not, and I said earlier with the intention of breaking it, that's not true. I wanted to see how heavy a duty it w actually was. And I have had no failures with this at all. I do have other knives. I wouldn't take this alone with me in the woods and count on this as my one and only. But uh, it's a very, very functional knife. And for the size of it and for the price of it, I don't think you can do wrong. 420 stainless steel, heavily coated over with that grip or that exterior coating on it. Holds an edge reasonably well. I won't say it's as good as O1 or any of the super steels, but it's also very easy to sharpen. One thing you can see I did do to the back of it was to square off the spine a little bit for, for uh, ferrocerium rods, and that works just fine. Okay, but it's not about the knife. It was about this sheath. Now, the only thing left to do was spray paint it with some flat Krylon paint, but uh, we're in the middle of a little bit of a snowstorm <laughs> outside right now, so that's going to be left for another day. All right, let's wrap this video up. All right, there it is, the finished project. Only thing left to do now is to paint it when, I, when the weather improves outdoors. Do you know what I like about working with PVC is that it's very easy and very inexpensive. Do you know, it didn't seem to make sense to me with this knife that I didn't pay very much for to pay a lot of money for a sheath. And it was obvious I needed to replace the sheath that uh, came with it. So the other thing I like about working with PVC is that I get the satisfaction of having made something myself. So if you're looking for an inexpensive material that's commonly available, easily worked with with commonly available tools, then you might want to give PVC a try. Again, I won't pretend it's as good as Kydex or leather, but it's much more available to the average person and very, le very much less expensive as well. Okay, that's all I have for you in this video. If you have any comments on the construction or the design or anything you think I could do, do to improve either, then I welcome those comments in the section below. But until next time, get out and explore and take that path less traveled. It'll make all the difference. Bye for now.